my class went to the Shawl Museum of Ozark History to see something called Sheep to Shawl. I thought that was a funny name until our teacher explained that we were going to see how people long ago made their clothes by hand. The first thing we saw was sheep. Sheep have fur called wool, which grows like hair. It protects the sheep and keeps them warm. Before wool can be turned into clothing, though, the sheep has to get a haircut. This is called shearing, and everyone in my class thought it was the funniest thing they had ever seen. The man who does the shearing is called a shearer. When he finished, the sheep looked naked. We each got a piece of wool, which felt really oily. The shearer said that this oil is called lanolin. It is really good for the sheep's skin and makes any cuts or wounds heal faster. The shearer said that it's also really good for human skin and that it makes his hands very soft. Lanolin is used in a lot of hand creams, body lotions, and other beauty aids. The shearer was really nice, and he answered a lot of questions from my class. He showed us how the wool has a crimp in it, like girls put in their hair, and this makes it strong and stretchy. When the next sheep was sheared, we knew that it didn't hurt him; it just made him a little nervous. He was a young sheep called Lamb, and this was his first time to be sheared, kind of like when a little kid gets his first haircut. The shearer had explained that he has a special way of holding and turning the sheep while he shears. The kind of shears he uses are electric, but he told us that a long time ago people used hand shears that looked like a big pair of scissors. Then they started using shears that had clipper blades and were run by someone turning a hand crank. This meant it took two people to shear one sheep. A while later, they added a gasoline motor to make the shears run, and this made the work a lot easier. Even with electricity, it still takes a lot of skill to shear a sheep. The shearer has to cut the wool very close to the skin without cutting the sheep. It's very important that the wool comes off just right in one big piece called a fleece. This fleece is then put in a wool bag and packed down tightly. Sheep farmers today sell these bags of wool to factories that make clothing. Watching the shearing was so much fun we could have stayed all day, but we had to move on to the next part of the demonstration. When we went into the museum's log cabin, we found a group of hand spinners using spinning wheels. One of the spinners explained to us that once the wool comes off the sheep, it has to be washed. Since we had already smelled and felt it, this didn't surprise me. Nobody would want to wear something made out of smelly, oily wool. Even after it has been washed, though, another spinner explained that it isn't ready to be made into yarn yet. Because wool is just like hair, it gets tangles. These tangles have to be combed out, and this is done with two cards, which look like two big dog combs. This is called carding. When the wool comes off the cards, it is in a roll called a roll lag. If you look at wool close up, you can see that it is made of lots of little hairs called fibers. When she pulled the fibers in opposite directions, they just came apart. Then, when she twisted the fibers, the wool wouldn't come apart. That's what a spinning wheel does. It twists the fibers. The kind of spinning wheel she uses is called a great wheel because of its size. It is also called a walking wheel because when you use it, you have to step back and forth. On the walking wheel, the wheel part is turned by one hand while the other hand feeds the wool onto a spindle. The spindle looks like a needle and has a sharp end. This is what Sleeping Beauty stuck her finger with. Ouch! The other spinners use smaller wheels called treadle wheels. These wheels are faster than the great wheel, and you can sit down while you use them. The wheel is turned by foot, so this leaves two hands to work with the wool. The spinning part of the wheel is called the flyer, 
and it is what puts the twist into the wool. Once it is twisted, the yarn goes onto a bobbin. The spinners make it look easy, but I could tell it took a lot of skill to do. One of the spinners explained to us that wool comes in different colors. Sometimes you might have black wool from a black sheep. The wool can also be dyed different colors, and this is usually done after it is spun. If it is done before it is spun, then it is dyed in the wool. In the old days, plants, berries, and even dirt were used for dyes. Today, synthetic dyes are used. The spinner passed around a ball of yarn which she had dyed with Kool-Aid. We tried to figure out what flavor she used. One of the spinners reminded us that wool isn't the only thing that can be spun to make clothing. Cotton was used by the pioneers and is still an important material today. Flax is another type of plant used to make linen. Even goat, rabbit, and dog hair can be spun. We learned a lot from the spinners. Next, it was time to see how the yarn or thread gets turned into a piece of cloth. For this, we had to visit the weavers in another building. The weavers use looms to make cloth. Looms come in different sizes. There are ones small enough to sit on a table or big enough to fill the corner of a room. In clothing or textile factories, looms are huge, stretching for yards and yards. The weavers showed us how the yarn or thread that has been spun is stretched tightly on a loom to make what is called a warp. The weaver pulls levers, which lift different threads in the warp. The opening that is made is called the shed. The weaver pushes the wooden piece called a shuttle through the shed. The shuttle has a piece of thread attached to it called the weft. Once the shuttle has been pulled through, you have to beat it into the warp to make the cloth tight. This is done with a beater. The weaver then does it all over again, only this time pulling different levers to lift different threads in the warp. This is what makes the pattern. It seems complicated, but weaving was really fun and not too hard to do. Everyone in my class got to try their hand at it. When we went outside, we got to weave on standing looms. These are easy to make, since they are just sticks tied together to make a rectangle with legs. The warp and the weft are made out of yarn that you buy at the store. I just wove my piece over and under, over and under, over and under. It made a pretty pattern. By the time we left sheep to shawl, I learned a lot about all the work that pioneers put into making clothes and blankets. Shearing, washing, Parting, spinning, dyeing, and weaving.